What's going on guys? Corey here from designsbyifr.com. Good to see you all and today we will be taking a look at the Thermaltake X1 RGB mechanical gaming keyboard. But before we begin, please do leave a like on the video, hit that subscribe button if you like videos like this and of course custom PCs. We've got plenty of them on the channel and I will leave the link to the Amazon link in the description below if you guys did want to go check this keyboard out. I hope you all enjoy. Today's video sponsor is brought to you by 0n9.com. They sell a lot of cheap PC keys, Xbox keys, and PlayStation keys, as well as more. Instead of paying full price for Windows, you can get your Windows 10 Professional OEM key for only 16 US dollars. You can get Microsoft Office 2016 Home and Student Key for 23.99 US dollars. Or you can get Microsoft Office 2016 Professional Plus Retail Key for $32.99. Use code IFR20 at the checkout for a 20% discount. And if you'd like more information, check the links in the video description. The Thermaltake X1 RGB keyboard is a mechanical keyboard coming in both silver and blue switches. Silver speed switches to be exact, as they have a 1.2 millimeter actuation point. However, more into that once we unbox this. In the box, you do get the keyboard itself. We do have some user manuals, some keycaps, and of course, a keycap remover in case you guys wanted to customize that keyboard a tiny bit. It also does come with a removable magnetic wrist rest to give users the desired level of comfort that they want to achieve. The keycaps are removed fairly easy. You simply slot the keycap remover down and in between the keycap and it will latch on. You simply pull up with a nice soft tug and it will remove the keycap to reveal underneath. If you did want to replace the black stock keycaps with the red ones, you aren't necessarily replacing it for an advancement to the keyboard. They are both made of the same plastic and there is no roughness or anything like that to get an advantage over someone using the stock keyboard. It's just whether or not you like red. So without any software, we do have a bit of control over the lights on the keyboard itself. There is a lighting button up the top which adjusts the different brightness of the light as you can see right here. You can turn the lights fully off or you can slowly cycle through different preset dimness of the lights to your desired level of illumination. As well as that one button controlling the dimness of all of the lighting, you can individually change around the blue, the green or the red by hitting the function F9, F10 or F11 key representing red, green and blue respectively. If you didn't want blue in your cycle, for example, you can simply turn that color off or you can dim it right down so it is barely showing. I guess the good thing about this is the customization without actually using the software which comes with this keyboard is pretty cool, especially for someone who is on the fly and hasn't created their own presets already. As well as adjusting the light illumination, you can also change the speed at which the particular lighting effect is moving at. For example, here we are hitting the speed plus button and we are speeding up this current lighting effect. Now, unfortunately on this keyboard, we do not have any designated macro keys. However, you can assign macro keys, which is great. And we also do have our media keys up the top right hand corner. Moving our way to the top of the keyboard, it does come with a 1.8 meter braided cable. This is certainly a lot longer than what a lot of keyboard manufacturers offer. So if your PC is quite a fair way away from the keyboard itself, this keyboard should certainly have no issues reaching the PC. The keyboard also comes with USB and headphone pass-through to make it a lot easier for cable management and cable routing. Now, as I was saying before, pulling the keycaps off is quite simple. Once it's off, you can see that we only have a 1.2 millimeter actuation point. And what I found difficult with this is I'm used to my brown switch keyboard. So I'm used to a 1.5 millimeter actuation point before the letter actually comes out or the key is actually registered. So I found myself accidentally hitting keys more often than not. However, that is just a user error. That's no fault to the keyboard. It's just something that I would personally have to get used to over time. Now, this may become an issue in games until you guys do get used to it. This keyboard also does come in blue switches and is rated for 15 million keystrokes. In the top left hand corner, you can see that there is a subtle TT logo over the escape button. That does illuminate RGB as well. I don't think it's too much in your face and I'm quite fine with having that TT logo up the top there. 
Now I wanted to dig a bit deeper into the keyboard. I noticed that the illumination on this keyboard was actually a lot better than a lot of keyboards out there. And upon moving a couple of switches, I found that the backing was actually a whitish, silverish color, which I assume was put there to actually help the light reflect a lot more through the keycaps themselves. At least that's my thoughts behind this process. I think it did work and it certainly did help to achieve a brighter illumination between all of the keycaps. Keycaps. As well as that white backing, I feel like the floating keycap design also helps the illumination of the light seep through a lot more, which is sort of why you can see the LEDs a lot more with this keyboard when compared to other keyboards. So the keyboard does come with an option of using a wrist rest. This wrist rest is made of the same plastic as the keyboard itself, both with a matte finish, which of course will reduce fingerprints. You know, glossy surfaces do pick up those fingerprints quite easily. I'm glad that they went with the matte finish and I feel like it is more of a premium finish as well. The only issue I do have with the wrist rest is I personally feel like, and this is probably because of my previous keyboards that I've had and what I'm used to, I feel like this wrist rest is a tiny bit too high for my liking and a tiny bit too short. If it was a tiny bit wider and the bottom part of my wrist wasn't touching the actual desk itself, I feel like my comfort would have been a lot better. But that's only one minor thing that is probably just my personal preference as well, being used to something else and not this particular keyboard. And perhaps maybe some sort of rubber or foam padding or something to sort of make that wrist rest a lot softer as well would have been a wise decision. So on the bottom of the keyboard and the wrist rests themselves, they do have rubber non-stick feet, so it's not gonna go sliding around the desk. And of course, we do have adjustable height on the feet on the back as well. Now, before we get into the different lighting effects, let's have a listen to the keys. This is some raw, unedited footage and noise straight from the camera. So keep an eye out for the key strokes and the noise that they make. Keys have full end key rollover with anti-ghosting, meaning that if you do press two keys simultaneously, it will not register a different letter. Now that is pretty common with most new high-end keyboards, but certainly something worth mentioning. So jumping over into the TT Premium X1 RGB program, you can see that we are greeted with a macros page. Here you can assign different keys and different macros to the keyboard, but we're quite interested in what we can do with the lighting. So let's jump over into the lighting. You can see that we do have this picture here. Now this is a real time effect. You'll see on the keyboard, it is happening exactly the same time as this program. Comes in very helpful. I'm glad that Thermaltake were able to implement this. Uh, it means that users can actually see what the different lighting effect is going to look like in real time right in front of their eyes. So we do have a total of six profiles, as you guys can see here. The keyboard does have onboard memory, so it will remember the profile as long as it is saved. And of course, you can slow down or speed up the effect and of course, change the brightness. So we do have lots of control over the color here. We do have white right in the middle. And of course you have your red, green, and blue color right here, which you can customize to your liking. So the default effect for me was the spiral rainbow as you guys can see in real time on the screen and in real life. We have a number of effects here, so let's go through them and I'll show you guys what they all do. So here we have the static. You can choose whatever color you like and then you just hit apply. And of course, in real time, that will change over on the keyboard. Next, we have the pulse. So you choose whatever color you want, just hit apply, and then that will start pulsing on and off that one individual color. Now you can go random and hit apply, and this will pulsate different colors through the RGB spectrum. So we had a green pulse, now we've got an orange pulse and so on. Now you can customize different zones for it to pulse in if that is what you would like. So we go into the wave, we hit apply. You can see that we do have a wave going across the keyboard. A lot of people like to use this standard design. However, they'd like to 
lower the brightness a tiny bit. Spiral Rainbow is what we had at the beginning. Then we have Spectrum Cycling. That is basically going through each color fully lit on the keyboard. So we went from a purple to more of a reddish color and then so on. We have Reactive. So if we hit apply here, that'll become reactive. Once we touch the keyboard, the key will light up. Let me give you a demonstration. So as you can see there, as I was hitting individual keys, that key was lighting up. Now you can customize different zones as well, so keep that in mind. Now here we have the flow effect. Basically, when you touch one of the keys, it will flow to the side. Let me give you guys an example. So as you guys saw, I touched the key and it went from either side in a red color. You can customize this to create your own colors by adding one of these. You could, let's keep that red. We'll add a, add a stop in there. We'll change that color to blue. Then we'll add another stop. We might change that to green. And then we might add one more stop and we will change that to yellow. So now once we hit apply, that will apply and then we will go and touch the keyboard and see what happens. As you can see there, you can customize your own certain patterns on the keyboard. So if we go to the ripple effect and we hit apply, again, you can customize that to your own liking. Let me show you guys how this works. So it basically spreads out from the center button that you press. Of course, you can slow the effect and you can lower the brightness. Let's go down to the raindrop effect. So the raindrop effect is just going to go crazy like this. You can have full, you can go random and so on. So the random will do different colors randomly all over the keyboard, pretty crazy. So you can have a snake running along your keyboard just like so, and that'll just continue in whatever color that you want. You can go random as well, and that'll be cycling through different colors as it goes through the whole keyboard. Then of course we have sound control that will basically play to the music and then system temperature. So if we do that, you can see that a system anywhere from zero to 40 degrees will be a dark blue, a lighter blue for something that is about 46 degrees and then green and so on. So let's hit apply and we'll see how hot our system is. So as you guys can see, the keyboard over there is a dark blue, so it is running less than 40 degrees in temperature. So you got some pretty cool customization within the software. Um, I definitely like all of the lighting modes and I like the customization that you can do to the keyboard. And there are six different profiles. So if you do plan on taking your keyboard anywhere, you can take it with you knowing that your profiles are stored in the onboard memory. Let's go ahead and have a look at one extra thing that Thermal Take decided to implement into this keyboard. So something cool that Thermal Take decided to do was add in a mobile app. Now I can't quite see when this would be used, especially when you guys do need the program installed on your PC itself to be able to actually use the app and sync your phone to the keyboard itself. However, it does have a pretty cool voice command, which is primarily what I wanted to show you guys. So the app does have all of the regular color effects and of course you can assign macros and everything from the app. It also has a virtual keyboard, which can be pretty cool if you guys are sitting away from the keyboard itself and you guys want to type something on the PC. So that will certainly come in handy. However, the main thing I wanted to show you guys was the voice control. So let me show you guys a few examples of how this works. So if we go into the settings and we select the voice control, you guys can see that we have a little microphone pop up. So what we're going to do is we're going to be able to cycle through the different lighting effects just by saying what we want. Let me show you guys an example. Raindrop. And as you guys can see, it went to the raindrops effect. Let's try something else. Wave. And as you can see, it changes straight away. So you have full control over your system by using your voice. You can change colors and you can go through all the different lighting effects. So overall, the Thermaltake X1 RGB keyboard is a pretty solid keyboard packed full of different features, especially a lot of lighting features and the customization that users do want. 
This keyboard I found for around 159 to 199 Australian dollars. I believe the 159 was on special, and of course I did find it for around 130 US dollars down to 120 on Amazon. So what do you guys think of all of these features for that pricing? Let me know down in the comments below. I do certainly think that it is packed full of some really cool features. Some of them not as useful as others and more a gimmick. However, there are certainly some useful features that other keyboards do not have. So let me know down in the comments below, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe. Check out more videos on the channel just like this one. Of course, custom PCs, water cooling tutorials, and more. And consider checking out our Patreon page if you did want to help support the channel. Links will be down in the description below. And we'll see you guys in the next one.